I don't know what it is. The room is cold. The thing doesn't go on. Ugh. So you, you I got me that. Oh yeah, no, I got okay. you. I'm good. Um, I just have a few questions. Shouldn't take too long. Whatever you want. Um, well, I wasn't sure how much time you had. But the, uh, we're not going on for about another hour. Oh, okay. So. Luke was advising. You know, Luke. Luke, Luke. is advising me that uh, Marquez. Yeah. He's advising me you didn't have too much time. Whatever, to whatever he says. Then. <laughs> he's, you know. Well, I was hoping uh, to start off, you could just give me a little. Um, Obviously, the Ramones name you've taken to like a whole new level. You have the radio show. You yeah. have a whole bunch of stuff. At what point did you realize that it was going to be you were going to be able to use that f to do so many different things? Well, part of the legacy being that I'm alive and able to do this, and it's unfortunate that Johnny, Joey, and Didi aren't with us, and I'm still able to do it properly. And I got a great band, and uh, I wanted to branch out in other areas. You know. Uh, you know, touring's great, recording's a lot of fun, but then I wanted to, to DJ and have my own show and have a punk channel on Sirius XM that reaches 20 million uh, uh, people, uh, and they merged. So I'm, uh, I'm not saying they all listen to my show, it's about 400,000 at this point. That's great. And um, I just play punk music, and I feel that a lot of those bands were overlooked when they came out, and they had great songs. And our... Uh, opposition at the time was uh, disco and uh, stadium rock and the uh, punk is re was real still is real and uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do a radio show and I get to pick my own songs uh, it's on uh, channel 28 faction Tuesday night at 8 o'clock and Saturday so that's just another tentacle of the business you know plus I do special DJ appearances around the world which I enjoy because I get to hear the songs I pick too and I get to hear them through these large PAs and <laughs> everything, you know, it's fun. But getting back to the legacy, I mean, uh, the legacy is important because there's a whole new generation that wasn't there that, you know, wasn't able to see the Ramones, they were too young. Now they want me to come out and play the songs. So I have Michael Graves on vocals who, uh, in a lot of people's opinion, is the best singer the Misfits ever had and he wrote the last, the last of their two albums. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And he was a no hockey camp, like uh, they they uh, you know uh, conjured up and you know uh, kind of like uh, bullshitted about. He he was uh, just doing his own thing, and he did, he joined the Marines. Right. So he wasn't in a hockey camp. Uh, that was just you know, again bullshit. And uh, he was successful on his own, touring, doing uh, acoustic uh, uh, shows of the songs that he wrote. And uh, now he's with me. And I always considered him a great singer and front man. And uh, we do 32 songs that, uh, you know, uh, people I'm sure have heard before. And, uh, you know, it, what it does really is it bridges the generation gap. You have uh, kids with their parents, parents with their kids, uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews, friends. And, uh, you know, it is a whole new world. And my guitar player is able to do the leads that were overdubbed by other guitar players on the Ramones albums. So when I hear a studio album, I want to hear those things. You know, I want to hear those intricacies. You know, and uh, my guitar player Alex is able to produce them, and I think it's an added plus. You know, and uh, also. Um, Another guy who's keeping the legacy alive, I feel, is Joey's brother, Mickey uh, Mickey Lee. He just put out a book about his brother, and uh, I've read it, and I keep reading it, and I understand it more now, you know. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that that we are both able to do that because I can't do it, I mean, it's you think you could do it alone, but you really can't, it's such a worldwide thing. Right. So when a guy writes a book about his brother, it's a good book, and it helps the legacy, then you're not alone. You know, I, 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 uh, you know, I feel like there's good, uh, com good company. Do you find that um, a lot of people are hearing maybe your music for the first time, like kids coming with their parents? I'm sure. Uh, we're talking 10 to 12, 13 year old kids. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, um, it's obviously the energetic level that we played, and this band plays, and it's the uh, lyrical content. Right. You know, it really appeals to youth, 
and uh, you know, uh, teenagers, kids, not stupid. They're not going to just listen to any, anything shoved down their throat. You know, they know when something's good. You know, when it's real and it's from from the street reality, not something that's thrown together. You know, American Idol stuff. You know, right? Cause this stuff's real, and they see that and they and they like that. You know. Um. Obviously, in the last few years, uh, CBGB's closing. Uh, did that have like? Did you have an em like a real emotional connection when you found out about that 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 was going to happen? And then no, I knew it was going to happen. Hilly, the proprietor, had cancer, and uh, you know he put out a T-shirt saying "Save CBGB's." Right. He wanted that to sell. So uh, no, he knew that the that they weren't going to budge, and uh, you know everybody rallied around it. But I knew it was it was an end of, of an era. I feel uh, bands should create their own scene and, and get their own club, like the CBGBs, you know, and not have to depend on uh, a club that's been around 34 years. You know, start your new CBGBs, which is great, because then you'll get more attention that way in your own scene. It's a great way to look at it. I yeah. think a lot of people think it's like a negative thing as opposed to sort of a rebirth. No, you new bands have to... Uh, start something new and fresh you know to be related to something old like that is okay but it's always better to have something that you help create and within your own scene that's cool um, have you been back there at all since it closed uh, yeah uh, I was in in the neighborhood <laughs> but uh, I don't go into those uh, high-end stores you know? yeah uh, I'm not going to buy a pair of jeans for five hundred dollars. I walked past, and it was. It was I mean, weird. you know, it's 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 the sign of the times. It's gentrified, and uh, it really got yuppie eyes, and you know that's the way uh, it goes, you know. But uh, that wasn't the intention of bands like Johnny Thunders and the Heartbreakers, Blondie, Talking Heads, uh, Richard Hell and the Vaudoids, and you know, television bands like that to have eventually a store that uh, sold high-end stuff, you know. Yeah. But that that's the way it is. That's life, you know. You're gonna do. Um, you know, by all accounts, the Ramones really defined punk in the '70s. How do you feel about the state of punk in 2010? Well, I get I, I got to listen to a lot of bands on my show because I got a lot of this, the their material. You got uh, a lot of young, a lot of younger a lot bands. Of young bands, yeah. And I don't care if they're signed or not. I'll play them if I like them because, uh, you know, uh, th there were opportunities that came my way, and I feel uh, I should do the same thing for newer bands to help them out. I like the Riverboat Gamblers. I like the Gallows from England. There's a lot of good stuff, you know. Uh, if I like it, I'll play it because I get to choose what I play. Is there anything else that comes to mind? Any other bands that you've heard recently? Younger guys? That's always I like Useless ID. Okay. I like uh, the Horror Pops. I like the Horrors. They're, they're pretty cool. I like the Arctic Monkeys uh, from England. Uh, big, Ar big Arctic Monkeys fans. Uh, the, the great sound. Yeah. I mean, the whole band's good. 